video. Um, the recording has now begun. So thank you for joining us. My name is Michaela Hyatt. I am a transportation program specialist with CCAG, San Mateo County, uh, managing the TDA Article 3 program uh, in tandem with my supervisor, Kaki Chang, who is here, a program director for CCAG as well. We are very excited to introduce to you all today the Transportation Development Act Article 3 fiscal year 2022-23 cycle call for projects. So a little bit about what we're going to be walking through today, just background about Transportation Development Act in general, uh, information about the grant in this cycle, which projects will be eligible, and then moving into what the requirements for those projects will be. Uh, finally, ending with the application schedule and what our expected timeline is, and then leaving room for the most exciting part for you all to ask us questions and provide comments. So some background on TDA Article 3, it became effective as of July 1st, 1972. Its two major funding sources are the Local Transportation Fund, LTF, and State Transit Assistance Fund, STA. The funds are distributed by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, MTC, uh, as I'm sure you're familiar, uh, to CCAG on a formula base annually. Uh, so CCAG, in an effort to make the pot a little bit bigger, releases a call for projects for TDA 3 biannually. Uh, on average, we receive about $1 million per year, and we have about 2.25 available in this uh, biannual call for projects this year. The program eligibility and guidelines are defined in MTC Resolution 4108. Um, I believe I, yes, perfect. Uh, and that I just dropped in the chat. So that will really give all of the further details uh, as MTC provides uh, on eligibility and guidelines. So for this year, uh, the grant information for fiscal year 2022-2023, we have 2.25 million available, of which 300,000 is available for planning projects and 1.95 million is available for capital projects. Any unused planning project funds may be used for capital projects. Uh, so for example, if there's only 150,000 in total requested for planning projects across all jurisdictions for this call, that remaining 150,000 uh, can be rolled over into capital projects. The maximum grant amount per project is planning projects $100,000 and capital project request $400,000. There is a 10% match required for both, that's local cash match. And the maximum number of applications per jurisdiction is one planning project and one capital project. There are, this call for project is available and eligible for only the 20 cities and counties in the County of San Mateo, as well as the unincorporated county in the County of San Mateo. The planning projects are limited to the development of a comprehensive bicycle and or pedestrian plan. And the capital projects are limited to quick build, ps &E and construction phases only. Quick build uh, in this sense uh, is new from MTC. We're very excited that it's now eligible. Um, and it includes things such as uh, paint uh, for striping, flex post, K71, uh, kind of those quick fixes to the street. And also available for a capital project eligibility is maintenance of a multi-purpose path, which is closed to motorized traffic. The requirements uh, for planning and permitting are the same as in years prior. So right of way, CEQA permitting and Caltrans standards must all be up to par, up to code. Uh, BPAC committee or a similar committee uh, for your jurisdiction must uh, be the approving body of the plan. And there must also be local planning support, local planning meaning that there is a similar committee uh, support of the project should you not have a standing BPAC committee. There are a couple new scoring factors I would like to introduce uh, for, or we would like to introduce uh, and have embedded through our BPAC and our board. We're very excited to now include equity and funding history. Equity in the sense of planning projects is going to include eight different criteria um, as prescribed by MTC and are available in your um, planning, in the overall letter and application call. Uh, and for capital projects, that's going to be those projects which are within an equity focus area as defined in the CCAG recently adopted countywide bicycle and pedestrian plan score six or higher, going all the way up to an MTC equity priority community, community excuse me, uh, or a Cal Envirus Green top 25% category. 
this is new and a total uh, points available for equity is five. And then for funding history, there's a similar five points available. Uh, funding history in this sense means that if your jurisdiction has not received funding specifically from TDA Article 3 in the past 10 years, then you are eligible for an additional five points in this funding history criteria. Unfortunately, if you have received funding within the past 10 years, you will not be eligible for this funding history criteria. Um, so yeah, we're excited to introduce those two uh, and the grants that must be extended by June 30th, 2025. Our standing schedule is to meet with you all today at this application workshop. The call for project has been released for about a week now, beginning on September 13th. Um, the applications will be due November 15th, 2021, and there will be project sponsor presentations to the BPAC at the January 27th, 2022 meeting, which will be followed up by project scoring at the BPAC meeting on February 24th, 2022 finally going for CCAG board approval March 10th, 2022, which we hope will give you all enough time uh, for those who are requested for uh, or recommended for approval to the board. Uh, this will give you enough time to go back to your respective city councils, go through the resolution process that MTC requires for each jurisdiction individually uh, and be ready to go as of July 1st, 2022 uh, to work on your project over the next three years. And with that, I am happy to take any questions. Kaki, would you like to add anything to that? No, I think you cover all the important parts. I'm happy to take any questions from the participants. Yeah, feel free to drop questions in the chat, um, unmute yourself or, or raise your hand and unmute yourself as well. I'm going to stop sharing my screen really fast. Have any of the project sponsors uh, gone through the application and have any questions for us um, in the application itself? Now it's also um, an opportune time to um, ask those questions as well. Good question. Has anything major changed since the last call? So the major changes would be the addition of quick build projects. That is new to just the MTC criteria overall. Um, so we're very excited to introduce that. Uh, happy to take any questions about like the specificities of what a quick build project is defined as. Um, and then also for this call, CCAG's uh, addition of the equity in the scoring criteria and then the funding history category. Um, I don't think I listed out the different equity components. So I'm happy to kind of explain that a little bit more um, in detail. So uh, you can go to page eight in the letter and application instructions, which is posted on our CCAG website. Um, but equity in the definition for planning projects would mean that your ch it uh, includes equitable transportation policies that address the needs of these eight different categories of low income groups, communities of color, people with disabilities, elderly populations ages 75 and older, zero vehicle households, uh, single parent families, limited English proficiency, and those who are rent burdened. Um, so that's how we're going to weight equity in the scoring criteria for uh, planning projects and for capital projects as I kind of briefly touched on. Uh, you can go on here, let me drop the link also to our different map. Um, but you can take a look at the web map that is just dropped in the uh, chat right there and check on the different boxes for the equity focus areas. Um, actually, we have some time. Uh, Kaki, do you think it would be beneficial for me to share my screen and kind of walk through uh, how to get there? Okay, let me do that. Uh, okay, so this, um, and I believe a lot of you were uh, helpful in developing this equity focus area. Um, just criteria in general. So we're really happy to be able to use it now. Um, so these are the different areas in San Mateo County uh, that do qualify as an equity focus area. 
um, of a six or higher. So how you get to this map, if you go and click on the legends, uh, the quickest way I find to do it is clicking on the countywide prioritization, but then scrolling all the way to the bottom uh, and then checking and unchecking this box to show equity focus areas. Uh, it automatically resets to an eight or higher, um, but you can drag down this bar to a six which is what we're going to be using for this active call for projects. Um, and if your project falls within one of these areas, then you are eligible um, for uh, equity points as a part of the TDA Article 3 call for projects. Um, so this is a baseline that would be uh, eligible for equity um, points in the TDA call for projects for 22-23. Uh, and then the, the maximum amount of points you can receive is if your project falls within an MTC equity priority community or in a Cal Enviro screen uh, census tract that is 25% or higher. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit uh, answer what's new in regards to equity. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about navigating this map. I know that the legend is pretty long, so <laughs> I'm happy to walk anyone through that. Um, and then for funding history, uh, I mentioned this as well, but the new element is just, if you have received funding from TDA Article 3 in the past 10 years, you wouldn't be necessarily eligible for the funding history category, but if you have not received funding from TDA Article 3 in the past 10 years, uh, then you will be eligible for an additional five points. Um, so it's a kind of a yes or no box in that regard. Uh, and those are the main things that are new to TDA Article 3. Um, and Jackie, did I miss anything there? No, I don't think so. We did have some questions about uh, minimum um, application amount or grant amount, which I don't believe we have a minimum. We do have a maximum amount, um, $400,000 for capital projects and $100,000 for planning project. And we're limiting to the agencies to submit only one planning grant and one um, capital grant application. So hopefully I've answered um, Karen's question from the chat. Thank you, Jackie. Um, thank you all for taking the time to join us. I'm happy to take any other questions that you have, be it project specific, um, just about any of the changes in general. Um, we are happy to stay on and we'll be available to answer your questions. Um, if you want to take some time and kind of look through the application process or uh, call a little bit more um, and haven't had a chance to do that yet as it's only been released for a week, uh, do uh, reach out to me with any questions at mhiatt, H-I-A-T-T at smcgov.org. I will put my email in the chat um, and we look forward to uh, getting all the wonderful projects from you all. We're very excited. It's been a while since our last TDA Article 3 call for projects. Um, so we're excited to see all of the um, great things going on just in and around the county in general um, and happy to take any other questions. This is a good question um, from Janice of TJKM. Uh, how ready are quick build projects? Uh, so the nature of quick build projects, how we're planning on um, kind of analyzing them in comparison to project readiness for those larger capital projects that are actually going through uh, a full design process is looking at the timeline and schedule. We do, uh, it is preferable that project completion happen within the three years of the timeline. Um, so for quick build projects, we would anticipate those to be complete within the three years of this grant eligibility. So if you can detail that in your application, listing out the timeline and when you would expect to have 
um, the project completely ready and in the ground for those pixel projects in your application, that's really what we're going to be looking for there. Um, I hope that helps kind of answer the question. Uh, Clickable projects are unique and it's going to be exciting to see how we can uh, build those in uh, also with the capital projects. Um, but I, yeah, I hope that that uh, gives the answer. And Shirley, that's correct. Uh, in the past, field visit was scheduled. We don't currently have them scheduled, largely due in part to uh, the current status of the pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, we will be using the videos and strongly encourage that you include one as a part of your application. It will not uh, take the place of the presentation to the BPAC on January 27th, uh, but we would encourage you all to submit uh, videos of your project as uh, due to the pandemic, we will not be conducting field visits as of right now. For the video, it would be really good to get an understanding of the current context of the site and really presenting kind of the project need uh, and also demonstrating how they're, uh, I guess the readiness of the project, maybe verbally if you can, um, including any maps, uh, but it's been really beneficial to kind of like do walkthroughs and have that representation in the video. Um, so just show if you can, I know it's kind of difficult to catch in the moment how dangerous an intersection might be or something like that. Um, proximity to schools or transit facilities, uh, elements like that. And to add to that, Michaela, um, I think the videos are a good way for us to see the local site conditions. So I encourage the project sponsors to really try to convey in the video what challenges the project would be able to address um, and you know, be able to capture the existing conditions. Um, it, it's just uh, oftentimes helpful to provide us some of those um, images and real conditions for the committee members to review and look at. Are there any project specific questions uh, that you all may have, uh, applications that you're planning to submit? Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> well, if they come up within the next few months, I'm happy to answer those questions for you all. Um, and we really look forward to uh, getting those projects in. And of course, feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you, take care. Thank you.